As the beginning of the 21st century bled into the 2010s, WWE was putting on some of the most stale content possible in the world of wrestling. Main eventers like John Cena, Triple H, and more continued to hog the spotlight, and fans were itching to find a new hero to look up to. And while guys like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk would give fans the new main event hero they craved, another superstar saw his name organically grow despite the company's best efforts. Sure, Bryan and Punk were held down by the company, but neither of them were met with the same level of confusing booking as one Zack Ryder. Getting himself over online, specifically outside of WWE's control, Ryder became a massively popular guy despite never really being on the show. Stop start pushes would come for poor Ryder, with him continuously floating at the bottom of WWE's talent pool before ultimately being pushed out of the pool on April 15th, 2020. However, while the rest of the world was shut down, Zack Ryder fired up and charged onto the independent scene becoming one of the best indie wrestling stars in the world. So, my name is Grish from Wrestleology, and today, let us see how the Ryder Revolution became the fuel for Matt Cardona's rise into the stratosphere. Signing with WWE in 2006, Matt Cardona's aka Zack Ryder's lifelong wrestling dreams seemed to be coming true. Now under the biggest wrestling company in the world, Ryder would debut in a prominent position on SmackDown in 2007. Alongside Brian Myers, WWE's Kurt Hawkins, the two would quickly join Edge as his bodyguards during his run as World Heavyweight Champion, the Edgeheads. Known as the Major Brothers, the team would continuously battle on behalf of the Rated R Superstar, even getting involved in the wrestling WrestleMania 24 main event between The Undertaker and Edge, failing to help him retain the belt against the Dead Man. The duo even won the WWE Tag Team titles with hopes for the team looking high. However, before they could continue to compete in the tag division, Ryder was soon drafted to the dying ECW brand, competing as a solo star for the first time, and that was pretty much the end of the Edgeheads. There, he developed a new character, hailing from Long Island, New York. Most of Ryder's mannerisms would shape up as he came down down with short hair, sunglasses, a headband, and his newest catchphrase, woo woo woo, you know it. Woo woo woo, you know it. However, despite this new creative direction for his character, Ryder would routinely be used to put over the bigger stars of the brand like Christian and Tommy Dreamer, with this role not changing much throughout his career. After a few years of struggling on the main roster, still seeing himself act as a jobber to the stars, Ryder decided to get a bit creative. Since he's not going to be used on the show, he'll just make his own. Before WWE grew into the social media juggernaut we see today, Ryder put himself out there on YouTube to try and organically grow his connection with the crowd as a goofy and comedic figure. Through his web series, Z True Long Island Story, Ryder showed off his own personality and love of wrestling while putting on skits with some of the other WWE superstars. And fans latched onto this, even before the Daniel Bryan Yes movement, with fans actively yelling out, we want Ryder at WWE shows that he was not at by WWE's choice. And that's the main story of Ryder right there. He got himself over through his own creative and comedic vision, but since it was outside of WWE's control, the company chose to ignore and even punish the hungry star. Fans pushed with both their words and their wallets, and WWE continuously ignored them. Ignored us, sure. Over the next decade, Zack Ryder built up a nice career on paper, winning the IC title at WrestleMania 32, winning the US title, and even winning the tag team titles another time with Kurt Hawkins at WrestleMania 30. However, in reality, these title reigns always felt like a consolation prize. Good job getting yourself over, kid. Here's a treat. And those treats, well, they just became worthless over time. Ryder, despite showing so much love and creativity, spent over a decade being pushed down the card as WWE just ignored his potential. But then we get to 2020. And after all the time toiling around in the undercard, Ryder was released and fans were curious as to what he would do. Would he become a full-time podcaster? Would he just go back to YouTube? Hell, would he try his hand in Hollywood? Well, eventually fans saw that Ryder still had something left to prove in pro wrestling as he showed up in AEW as Matt Cardona. Saving Cody Rhodes from an attack by the Dark Order, Cardona looked like a completely changed man ready to take on the world. And after leaving AEW a few months later, Cardona's drive towards wrestling success brought him to Impact Wrestling. Debuting at Hard to Kill, he would continue to showcase his talents in Impact 
contract before bringing on his real-life fiance and recently released from WWE, Chelsea Green as an in-ring partner. But while he was making waves as a part of Impact Wrestling, another company was starting to make headlines in the world of wrestling, GCW, also known as Game Changer Wrestling, a company built on violence and the love of hardcore wrestling fans, as well as the hatred for WWE's brand of sports entertainment. And at the forefront of this brand was Nick Gage, a former convicted felon with a brutal deathmatch style. Gage, following a defense of the GCW world title, was quickly attacked by a hooded figure. Flailing his arms and hitting a brutal double arm DDT, fans suspected that the recent rival of Gage, John Moxley, would make his long-awaited arrival to GCW. But despite fans expecting to see one of the most beloved wrestlers in the world, they were quickly taken aback when they saw the face of Matt Cardona. Flipping off the crowd, Cardona immediately positioned himself as the most hated man in the promotion. Not only did he just attack the company's top star, but he also did it while waving the flag of WWE. You see, upon his debut, Cardona decided to change up his persona. He became a WWE mega fan, riling up fans by pledging his allegiance to WWE and competing more like a sports entertainer than a deathmatch machine. And from there, he won the GCW World Championship at GCW Homecoming in 2021, looking to quote unquote fix the company and turn it into another version of WWE. He even took the time to call the GCW fans the GCW universe, adding more insult to his performance while teasing to turn the GCW title into a spinner belt. However, before he could get the chance to do so, John Moxley would rear his head into GCW to take the belt back on behalf of the fans. Through this character, he became more and more hated with more passing references to WWE. From there, he'd begin to dress up as WWE superstars like Mick Foley and even Vince McMahon himself during matches, blending his WWE bias while using the hardcore wrestling fans' knowledge to insult them. Cardona would use the references to hammer in the point that he was a WWE fanboy spitting in the face of the fans, pretty much. And to continue this disrespect for the audience, Cardona would go on to win, bizarrely, the ECW TV Championship from Rhino before throwing it in the garbage. Yeah, you heard me. Cardona won the ECW television title in 2022. This, alongside his official heel turn in Impact Wrestling to win the digital media title, made him one of the most hated characters in the independent wrestling world. But despite this hatred from the audience, it was clear that Cardona's in-ring talents were better than anticipated. Battling in brutal death matches while also winning titles all over the US, Cardona's talents were only growing with fans forced to take notice. He was popping up everywhere, from MLW to NWA to DDT Pro and more, all while putting on matches that stole each and every show. He continued to win world titles, such as the NWA title, and has been routinely discussed by wrestling journalists as one of the best competitors on the indies. His ego and his talents led him to becoming, in his own words, the Deathmatch King. And since then, Cardona has fought across multiple promotions before disappearing from our view in late 2023, with speculation that he would return to WWE following this massive reinvention. However, shockingly, Cardona would choose to continue betting on himself, returning to Impact Wrestling in March of 2024 to help Steph DeLander, I hope I said that name right, become the number one contender for the Impact Women's title, adding yet another wrinkle to Cardona's character. And nowadays, he's putting on some classics with Nick Nemeth, formerly known as Dolph Ziggler, while being known by independent wrestling fans all over as the Indie God. And recently, he actually went ahead and appeared on AEW once again on an episode of Collision to challenge Adam Copeland, yes, Edge, whom he actually started his career with for the TNT title during Adam Copeland's Cope Open. And this match was crazy. I'm not going to lie. It was really fun to watch. And it was just a really feel good moment because this has been one of Matt Cardona's absolute all time dream matches. He wanted to go ahead and battle Edge in the WWE, but it just never came to fruition. But now, because of AEW and Adam Copeland's open challenge, that was possible. So that was really cool. But overall, when looking at Ryder's reinvention into Matt Cardona, a few things are clear. One, WWE should have done more with him. He's clearly a creative and enthusiastic wrestler, and we all knew that even before the release. Two, Matt is one of the most passionate wrestlers in the world. His character is full of historical references and insider remarks, proving his own love for the business. And three, Matt has redefined what success could mean in the wrestling business. This guy whose dream it was to wrestle for WWE faced those dreams at merely 21 years old and was routinely let down by them for over a decade. So he proved that you don't need to be in WWE to become a global 
name. Through his intelligence, his creativity, and his drive, Cardona forced himself into becoming a superstar even without WWE. When the radio went silent following his release, Cardona created his own signal that struck a chord with wrestling fans. And with Cardona only in his late 30s, it's safe to say that we haven't seen the last of that spark that Cardona brings to the lightning rod of pro wrestling. And who knows, he might just make a comeback to WWE, but this time not as Zack Ryder, but as always ready Matt Cardona. Because whether it's a Rough Rider or a radio silence, Matt Cardona will continue to build his legacy as one of the greatest stories in independent wrestling. Drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to not miss the next video. And thank you so much for watching.